Beautiful people of the Most High, God, all praises to the Most High. Um, before I start this video, I just want to let you all know that I did put the daughter assigned videos on private just for the time being because God told me to. Because um, in the last week of October, um, you know, the wicked people have been doing a lot of moon magic and. Um, you know like halloween rituals and a lot of evil and god said that they come to my videos and they curse the daughter zion videos because they don't want her to be queen and for me to put them on private so when he tells me to take them off private i will so it's not because it's not true it is definitely true if witches and wizards come to my video to curse the video so um with that being said, that is just why they're on private for now, but when God gives me the clearance to put them back up, to take it off private, I will. So, hi beautiful people. So, um, the message and the teaching today is um, basically God talking to us about being very cautious in these last days and love and wisdom and the truth is what's going to preserve us through this all. And as we know, when Christ came, he preached and spoke a lot about love. And God wants me to break down the first book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse, eight, verse 4 to 8. And um, to, to, to like basically show you how God operates and how you should not judge people according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And his character and his attributes and what he does his actions because love is an action word and god showcases his love to every one of us and for us not to be deceived by fake love that comes from friends family and just people you know and to discern real love and fake love because what god has definitely have shown me is that most people that you know most people that are around you do not love themselves so they're incapable of loving you all right and we're going to prove this within their actions and i'm going to break it down with with the word of god exactly how he wants me to do it okay so in the book of first book of corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 it says love is patient love is kind right god is patient we know that god is love love is kind god's love and kindness it does not envy god doesn't envy we know god is love it doesn't envy so if you someone says they love you and they're not patient with you they don't love you they don't know what love is if someone says they love you and they're not kind to you and they're mean they don't know what love is if somebody says they love you and they're envious and jealous of you there's no end there's no jealousy and envy in love love does not envy it does not boast if someone says they love you and they're boasting uh, uh, boasting about uh, against you they, they don't love you they don't know what love is L love is not proud Pro love is not prideful it doesn't have an ego it does not dishonor others it's not self-seeking love is not selfish it's kind it's not easily angered god is slow to anger it keeps no record of wrongs god blows out your sins and remembers it no more we're gonna break this down with the scriptures love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth love is telling the truth love is not doing evil to the person you say you love it always protects doesn't god always protect you he said he wasn't he will never leave you he will never forsake you always trusts always hopes always preserves love never fails love covers a multitude of sins but where there are prophecies they will cease where there are tongues they will be stilled where there is knowledge, it will be passed away. So love is patient, right? 
Now 1 John 3 and 18, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So what is love? Love is an action word. It's truth when we go down here. Love does not delight in evil, but love, but rejoices with the truth because love is an action word. If they don't speak the truth to you, that's not love. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And, and love doesn't fear. The first book of John 4 and 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. So people who are afraid and fearful, they're not made perfect in love. They don't know what love is. They can't love you properly. Then God tell, talks about like a woman who's well loved of her friends. He says she's an adulterer, adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. Now, 1 John 4 and 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Satan keeps everybody and ha people hating each other because love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. So when you walk in love, when your deeds and your actions are in love, when you speak the truth, when you're kind, you're operating in the love of God. And you know God. Now, the first book of Thessalonians 4 and 9. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. You're taught of God to love one another. Not in words, I love you, I love this girl, I love this guy. No. In your deeds. In your actions. Now, 1 John 4 and 20. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. So if a man or a woman says they love, they hate, they hate, they love God and they hate their brother or their sister, they're a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Okay, now let's go back to this love. Love, it is not easily angered. Is not God slow to anger and merciful? Psalms 103 and 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Are you merciful and gracious? Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Because if you judge without mercy, you'll be judged without mercy. And if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Now, Psalms 145 and 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Are you slow to anger with the people you say you love? Are you of great mercy to the people that you say you love? Now, Proverbs 16 and 32, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit than he that takes the city. So, what 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 about our what is about love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast love and kindness do we not know about the lord's love and kindness let's talk about god's love and kindness because people do not know what love is a lot of people do not even love themselves so they're incapable of loving you a lot of people don't really love their children or their person that they sleep with or their family members because they don't know what love is. They don't operate in love. Psalm 63 and 3. They don't really love their friends. No. They don't know, love their neighbor like their self. No. Yeah, right. Because thy love and kindness is better than life. So love and kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. God's love and kindness is better than life. And my lips shall praise thee. Psalms 
Psalms 88 and 11. Shall thy love and kindness be declared in the grave? No. God's love and kindness is declared every day. Psalms 48 and 9. We have thought of thy love and kindnesses, O God, in the midst of thy temple. Are you? Do you show people love and kindness? Psalms 191, 59. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy love and kindness. Quicken me after thy love and kindness, so shall I keep the testimonies of my mouth. For thy loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. Do you walk in truth? Well, that's a part of love. Are you loving and kind? Now let's go back, because love is patient. Right? Love is kind. We just got through that. Love, it does not envy. Love does not envy. It's not proud. Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Envy is as cruel as the grave. Envy seeks to kill you. For wrath kills the foolish man and envy slays the silly one. Envy is a rottenness in your bones. A sound heart is life of the flesh, but envy is a rottenness of the bones. These things are not to be so. Are you slow to anger with those you love? Let's go back because God wants me to read the scriptures and show you he's none of these things with his love. Our love is patient. Are you patient? Romans 12 and 12, rejoicing in hope. Are the people who say they love you patient with you? Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer? James 5 and 8. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Be also patient. Establish your hearts. Now, Romans 2 and 7. This 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 will this will open up your understanding to them who by patience continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and in moral in more immortality eternal life immoralities forgive me eternal life and the servant of the lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach and patient Do you keep record? Do these people who love you keep records of wrong? Are they selfish? Because love, it does not dishonor others. Is the person who loves you dishonoring you? Doing things behind your back to dishonor you? To dishonor you? Speaking ill on your name to dishonor you? It's not self seeking. Is it selfish? Is it mean? <laughs> Is it self observed? Well, that's not love. It is not easily angered. Are they slow to anger? God is love all through and through. It keeps no records of wrong. It keeps no records of wrong. How many people say they love you and they're keeping a track record of wrong against you? But what does God say? Hebrews 10 and 17. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Are they keeping records of wrong for you? <laughs> Psalms 25 and 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. For I will be merciful to their unrighteous... Hebrews 8 and 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So are they keeping track record of your sins? Well, that is not love. Did they forgive you? No. Now Isaiah 43 and 25. I, even I am he that bloats out thy transgressions for my own sake. And I will remember 
and I will not remember thy sins. Now, are, are these people who love you keeping? It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not, does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Are they lying to you? Are they, are they rejoicing in evil when they do evil to you? That's not love. It always protects. Love always protects. Doesn't God always protect? Let me prove it to you. That people don't know what love is. They do not operate in the actions of love like God. Period. Deuteronomy 31 and 8. God's love doesn't leave you. And the Lord, it is he that does go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be this way. Love preserves. It doesn't fail. It always preserves. Doesn't God always preserve you? Where he will never fail you? And neither forsake thee? Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Be strong and, and of good courage. Fear not. For there's no... Because love, perfect love, casts out fear. If you were operating in perfect love, you wouldn't be fearful. There's nothing that can make you afraid. Satan can make you afraid. Principalities and powers could make you afraid. No dragon, no beast, no devil, no entity, no man, no woman, no government, no death, no jail could make you afraid. No oppressor, no bully, no multitude could make you afraid. No lie in report could make you afraid. No loss could make you afraid. Because you dwell in perfect love. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, it is he that does go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Isn't that preserving you? Isn't that loving you? Isn't that it always protects? Isn't that protecting you? Always trust, always hopes, always preserves love never fails love never fails so let us not say that we love one another if we don't do these things if we're not kind if we're not loving and we know two peters the second book of peter chapter one verse seven and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity so love ain't mean love ain't selfish love ain't self-absorbed matthew 12 and 35 a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his treasure brings forth evil things So we, uh, we had to understand God is love. And those who dwell in love dwell with God. And love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude, covers all sins. Because it's forgiving all. Um, I don't know why that scripture is not coming up. Love covers a multitude of sins. And it also, it says love covers all sins. So there's a lot of fake love going on and God's not for it. Proverbs 10 and 12. Hatred stirs up strifes. That's why Satan wants you always hating and strifing with people because there's no God there. But love covers all sins. And even charity, being kind, covers a multitude of your sins. The first book of Peter 4 and 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity covers a multitude of sins. Now, one John, the first book of John 4 and 10, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us 
and he sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. So love covers all sins and love covers a multitude of sins as well. But charity, being kind, being charity, being a cheerful, and God loves a cheerful giver. It covers a multitude of sins. You know what's something people don't understand? You see, when God blesses a man or blesses a woman, and the family members and the friends and the people that know them, they get jealous and envious and want to destroy that person and want to see and praying on their downfall, them people actually get cursed by God. God loves a cheerful giver and God loves when people are happy for each other. Okay? Because everybody has their time. All right? Let me give you an example. Say, say you're in high school, right? And Johnny, there's Johnny and there's Sally. Johnny gets a scholarship to be a pro basketball player and got drafted from high school, okay? Sally and Nick were, hit, were, were Johnny's friends. The gift that made room for Johnny was his skills in playing basketball, in which that gift made room for him. He ended up even quitting high school. That was his journey. That was his path. That was his gift that made room for him. The blessing that made him rich. Now, Nick and Sally end up getting jealous of Johnny. Right? So Nick quit school to compete with Johnny. But it didn't work out the way that Nick expected it. Because that gift that Johnny had is not what Nick had. Nick was supposed to stay in school and work on the gift that makes room for him. He didn't, Johnny's gift manifested early because Johnny was practicing basketball since he was two and three. So he was skilled by the time he got to high school working on his gift. But what God blessed Nick, Nick with, it wasn't the same gift that he blessed Johnny with. Nick had to stay in school. God blessed Nick to be something else. And the blessing that, that made Nick rich, he had to still learn in his gift. He had to finish school to get the experience on where God was taking Nick. But Nick was envious and jealous. He wasn't happy for Johnny. But Sally stayed in school. And she worked on her gift. And the blessings came for her. And her gift made room for her, brought her before great men. And when she made it to her blessing and be, and the riches that made her rich and the, the gift that made room for her, she met Johnny in her later life and her and Johnny were happy for each other that they made it out of that situation and spoke about how God blessed them. And Sally never hated on Johnny and Johnny never hated on Sally. Johnny was happy when Sally made it. Now I say that to say this, when people, God blesses your family member, friends, or somebody, you know, you're supposed to be happy for them because that blessing can run over. When God sees that you're genuinely happy for someone's blessing, for someone's gift, for someone running into some unexpected money, fortunes, finances to better their self and their family and their condition, and you're happy for your friend, you're happy for your brother or sister, you're happy for your family member, you're not hating on them, you're not jealous, you're not envious, you don't want what they have, you're not cursing them, you're not paying witch practitioners and doing black magic on them because they have that, but you're happy for them, God will bless you. God will bless you. And he will even make it that the blessing can run over on you. But if you're hating and you're jealous and you're doing witchcraft and magic behind these people's back and you're digging pits and snares for it, God will make sure you fall in that pit and put you to shame. Because God loves a cheerful giver. And charity covers a multitude of sins. 
So don't be hateful or envious or jealous of somebody when God blesses them and their gift makes room for them because everybody has their time. Johnny's gift wasn't the same as Sally's gift. Nick's gift wasn't the same as Sally or Johnny's gift, but Johnny, Nick gave up his life. He didn't want to follow after his gift. He did. He, he he was jealous of Johnny, that Johnny got to his gift and his blessings and his fortunes at a young age. And then he threw away his life trying to compete with Johnny. Sally didn't do that. Sally was happy for Johnny. Do you see what I'm saying? This is what's happening in the heavens and earth with people who've been jealous of their friends and their family and their neighbors. They're Nick. They're not Johnny and they're not Sally. And they're under punishment. Because they weren't happy for another. So the blessing could run over and that God could bless them. They didn't work on their own gift. They were watching other people's gifts. They never worked on their own blessing to make them rich. They were watching other people's blessings that made them rich. They never operated in love and kindness. They operated in hate. Works of the devil. They operated in envy. So they never seen good when good came to them. Because they were busy competing and comparing with others. Do you see why you should operate in love and kindness? Because charity covers what? A multitude of sin. And love covers all your sins. And I hope you get this. Love is slow to anger. Because God is slow to anger. And God is love. So we can't say we love God. And we know what love is. When love is an action word. Let us love in, not in, but in deed. My little children, let us not love in word. Neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What are you doing behind the people you say you love's back? What are you saying about them when they're not there? What are you doing behind their back? Well, this is your deeds will show if you love somebody. And are you speaking the truth about these people? That'll show that you love them as well. Now I'm going to read 1 Corinthians. I'm going to wrap up this video with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 and 8. I'm going to read it again because we broke down patience, kindness, and it doesn't, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, there will, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will be passed away beautiful people let us not love in word but indeed stay blessed beautiful people of god